This is a basic introduction to virtualization. My name is Chris Titus and I'm going to be going over virtualization today with you guys. Uh, my LinkedIn and Steam profiles are up there if you want to look me up in my other videos. Basically I want to go over when you want to use it, when you don't, and the basic hypervisors that you're going to see in virtualization. Um, basically you want it for high availability and portability of your virtual machines so if a host or a hardware went down it could just easily port over to another piece of hardware without any downtime or minimal downtime. It uses less hardware for more server instances so what that basically means is you can use one box and host four different servers on it. Um, it's a headless implementation so you don't need a keyboard or mouse or a monitor after the initial setup phase. You'll typically interface with it with, from a different computer. It's very common in server racks and non-workstation environments. You won't be using it if it's your main PC and you're doing gaming or whatever on it and it's just a workstation that you're going to be doing business or email, whatever. Uh, there's a couple exceptions there. There's a software called Unraid that people have used to create like double workstations out of one box or QEMU is used by some gamers to host a Linux operating system and have a Windows on a different monitor that's native that they can just launch directly from Linux but very obscure usage so typically you won't be doing virtualization unless you have a dedicated machine for it. Um, weak hardware that doesn't support it, uh, you don't run into this anymore almost everything 64-bit and supports all full vir virtualization. Um, specific hardware needs, so you run into this like I uh, uh, had a client that had AutoCAD, their architect firm, and they needed to do hardware keys for their CAD software. Each the software was about you know five to ten thousand dollars a pop and you can't virtualize that or or it's very difficult to do it because you have to do a pass through to it. So there's some really license specific things where they have hardware keys and a lot of times they require you to uh, have that physical machine up and going and you can't virtualize that, at least not very easily. Um, I've also done GPU mining and a lot of times uh, you, know, you can't really virtualize those because I've had one machine with up to 12 cards on it and it's doing that many pass-throughs, it's just not very uh, feasible. And probably the last case where you don't want to use virtualization is when you have a redundant domain controller. Almost every system admin wants to have a physical machine that doesn't have a hypervisor on it that just does like a, a backup of the domain controller should a catastrophic event happen and that hypervisor go down you want a backup of some sort. So having an independent physical uh, domain controller, uh, some system admins still still love that. Uh, personally, I think if you have redundant hosts and a redundant setup, it, it doesn't matter, but you know, you'll still see it on occasion. And the types of hypervisors you guys are gonna see, uh, VMware ESXi is gonna be your bread and butter. Almost every business uses it. Um, some don't for budget, uh, but it's what you'll see most out in the field and in data centers. Hyper-V is going to be your runner-up up on that, just because it's extremely common. It's basically baked into all the Windows Server licenses. And it's very easy to run. Um, last is Citrix Zen Server. Um, I particularly like this uh, piece of software, and it's something I've installed on my home lab here. It's a freemium model. Um, but I don't actually run on the official Citrix version that they give out for free. Um, there's a community-driven one that basically gives you all the features that they've locked behind paywalls, so you guys aren't going to have to spend ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 a year to unlock GPU pass-through and some other really awesome features that are on there. Um, this open source project is called XCPNG, and it has all the features of uh, the pay, -to pay model that Citrix offers. And this is basically what it looks like. Um, to basically break down, um, you'd have 
the hypervisor here, they also have a web-based version called Zen Orchestra, but I have this. It's called Zen Center from the Citrix offering. They had to rename it, obviously, for uh, brand purposes and copyright issues, but it's the exact same. It looks identical to the actual Zen server that you see in the commercial offering. Uh, you have your host here and your VMs lined up here and then your basic storage arrays. And I'll go through this in another video. I just kind of want to give you guys a breakdown of what virtualization is, when you need it, uh, and some of the big benefits um, for using it. And that's mainly hardware and, um, you know, being able to host a ton of operating systems just off one piece, one box. So I can, I'm, I'll spin up another server, you can create a new VM, put it all on there, and then see it all at a glance from here. you got console, yeah, let's see here, got the console, how much memory, you can, you can allocate and change this dynamically, it does require shutting down the VM though, um, assign storage to it in a typical commercial setup, you will, won't, won't be using local storage, you'll actually probably use in the SAN, and Here's the ISO library where you'll you'll put all your images in, so you'll have your Ubuntu and Debian and you know CentOS and all the other uh, distributions in here. Um, but I'll, I'll walk through this in another video. Uh, but this is just kind of a basic breakdown of virtualization and how to use it and whatnot. We'll come in following videos. Thank you.